Well, here we are again in the middle of the week on Wednesday. I, I like Wednesdays. I like my Wednesdays at Crossroad Baptist Church. I normally get up early in the morning. I did this morning about 4.45 and uh, have some time with the Lord, a cup of coffee, and and then I get dressed and head down to the gymnasium to do a little workout and uh, come back home, have some breakfast, a little family time, and, and uh, get dressed again and then drive down here to Asheboro. It's about a 45 minute drive. And then I like starting my day early here. And it's a long day here, usually on Wednesdays and uh, takes us through a work day today. And then our service tonight, let me remind you about that time tonight at seven o'clock, we will be meeting and uh, for our adult Bible study. And I'm looking forward to having some fellowship with you tonight on campus. And uh, then our student ministry meets as well. Our Awanas meet and uh, a good time together on Wednesday evening. I hope that you'll be in your place tonight if you're part of our church uh, every Wednesday night at seven o'clock. Well, this Sunday is a, another good day upon us. We had a great day this last Sunday on Mother's Day. Uh, we were back up in the uh, worship center, the sanctuary for two of our morning services and our Bible study fellowship in between. Good time in the Lord and a great attendance. And uh, thank the Lord for the fellowship and the, uh, the presence of the Lord in our services. And I'm looking forward to this Sunday. Hope that you'll be in your place. 8.30, we'll have our first worship service together. And then our second work, worship service at 11 o'clock, Sunday school at 9.45. I'm taking some time for a couple of weeks uh, working with the newly elected pastor search team here at Crossroad and uh, training them and getting them started and uh, trying to help them with uh, uh, some good uh, uh, information to process uh, what they're going to need to uh, find God's man for this church and and their preparation, their work, their assessing, their evaluating. And uh, we'll be meeting again this Sunday afternoon for another time of training. But I'm also in the midst of working with our transition team that's been in place for over a year now. And I think most of you know my time is winding down here. I've got a, a couple, a little over a couple of weeks left here at Crossroads till the end of May. And uh, then I'll be moving on. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is be very diligent and uh, doing what I can to uh, identify what is the most important things that I need to do before I leave uh, to give them information to carry on after I'm gone. We're presently working diligently getting our church profile together, our pastor profile together, and uh, I'm training them about the needed work and the summertime that's needed in our third and fourth focus point called leadership and connections. And uh, Stephen Moore will be the chairman of our transition team. I'm spending extra time with him, trying to prepare him as well to do a good job in the remaining work of the transition period while uh, the church is searching for a pastor. And uh, uh, I think you'll hear more about this Sunday, but there's some conversations, some planning uh, with Mitch and Justin leading the church and the rest of the interim period as, as staff pastors here and um, having some conversation with them as well. And uh, you'll hear more about that in the days to come. Uh, but uh, Sherry and I will uh, be leaving on the 31st of May. I don't really, I know several have asked, I, I don't have my next assignment yet. Uh, waiting on the Lord. I know he's got another place for us to serve, uh, but pray for us as we're in a transition ourselves, uh, seeking the will of the Lord for the summer months and the days ahead. It's been a good journey here. We thank the Lord for what he's doing and what yet can be done here at Crossroads. So many opportunities, and I certainly pray the blessings of God at this good church as they're waiting for their next pastor. While we're talking about pastors, uh, this Sunday, I've got a message in the oven uh, that's baking, and I hope to get it out as, as fresh baked bread Sunday morning, ready to preach it. And uh, But I've got some of my thoughts this morning in Acts chapter 20. A lot, a lot of people have thought about this as being a pastoral information from Acts chapter 20. Uh, but I want to give you just a brief lesson this morning uh, about Paul's uh, teaching and instruction that he had for pastors. And uh, in the New Testament, uh, we have the idea of a pastor uh, as being the elder uh, or the bishop, as it's used in uh, some translations, or a teacher from 1 Timothy chapter 3. 
Titus chapter 1, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, and some other scriptures as well, and, uh, and their role and their designation as pastor. But Paul is on a journey, uh, a missionary journey, and he's joining some others in a boat. He's heading back to Jerusalem here in Acts chapter 20 uh, for the time of Pentecost. And he desires to stop by Ephesus to meet with a, a Ephesian pastors, the Ephesus pastors in Ephesus. And he wants to spend a little time with them. And he unfolds it here in the latter part of the chapter, chapter 20. That's a really good pattern of teaching for pastors. Uh, in uh, 2008, after uh, leaving my second pastorate and uh, after pastoring 30 years, uh, I developed a ministry called the Helping Hands Foundation of North Carolina. And it was designed specifically to help pastors in their personal needs and to encourage them and to just strengthen them any way that Sherry and I could in the latter years of our ministry. And it's it's a transition from not only that to now helping churches that uh, that uh, uh, look for some uh, instruction or maybe some help by way of their future planning, uh, maybe some churches in conflict, that kind of thing. But for the first part of our ministry, it was designed to work with pastors. And I still do that. I, I'm a certified pastor coach, by the way. I love working with preachers and pastors and see uh, what I can do in my experience uh, to be able to help them. But Paul is uh, kind of reflecting on this pastoral coaching, pastoral training uh, that he did. He shares his testimony beginning in verse number 18. And he says that, you know, from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I've been with you at all seasons. And he begins to unfold that here in Acts chapter 20. And I can just see him sitting around a table uh, with six or eight or 10 pastors from Ephesus and instructing them and talking about his testimony and uh, how he functioned as a pastor. Now, keep this in mind, Crossroad Baptist Church, that as you look for a pastor, uh, I, I know sometimes we have opinions of what we would like to have in a pastor and some ideals or ideas about the looks of a pastor, the skills of a pastor. But more than ever, reflect your mind to the biblical patterns in Scripture about what a pastor is instructed to be and how he performs and what his duties and role is in the church. And that's most important. And above all else, if we could set aside our own notions and personal feelings about a pastor and just agree with God about uh, this pastor that, that is, that is uh, exemplified in the scriptures by way of an elder uh, or a teacher or as a bishop. And here's some things I'll point out to you. Just go right down through the scriptures. If you've got your pen, you can mark some of these things. Just, it just kind of numbers them right through here in Acts chapter 20, beginning verse 18, what he, what he talks about concerning the pastor. Verse number 19, Paul's testimony was that I'm a servant of the Lord. I'm serving the Lord. I mean, you can't beat that. If, if a pastor ever determines, you know, what do you do? Well, I serve the Lord. I'm called to be his servant. I'm a spokesman for God. I serve the Lord. And Paul gave that testimony. And then look what else he says in verse number 19. He said, I did it with a humble mind. A pastor who serves the Lord, a pastor who's humble. Be careful when you notice and are suspicious about the motive of a pastor self-promoting himself, uh, being arrogant, being proud, always talking about himself. Uh, the servant of the Lord is a humble servant. Matter of fact, that's what our Lord Jesus was. Remember in Philippians chapter two, he humbled himself and he took on the form of a servant. Here it is back again in Acts 20, verse 19, serving the Lord, humble in mind. And then look what else it says in verse number 19. He's passionate. Uh, Paul was noted with many tears back in the uh, same chapter of uh, this chapter went down verse number 31. It refers back to his tears again. Uh, Paul was often seen crying. He was passionate. Uh, he was broken uh, through his the humble mind that he had and as a servant of the Lord. And uh, uh, he was a passionate man. Uh, he's one in verse number 19 that had many 
temptations and many trials. And uh, I tell you, one of the blessings of a pastor uh, having some difficult times in ministry and facing some battles, and a pastor will, uh, to see him overcome them. And that the trials in his life as a servant of the Lord has sharpened him in his ministry to be better equipped uh, to do God's work. And verse number 20, he said, I'm an example. He said, I kept nothing back from you. He said, I have showed you. Every pastor, when I teach pastors, I say the same thing. You, you, you know, you, you can live your life by way of influence and show and teach people more many times than you can from a book or even from the Bible. And uh, a pattern of life that's biblically based on scripture that people constantly see in you. They see your attitudes, and they see your action, and they see your appearance. And a pastor is constantly an example to the people that, that he's serving as he, as he serves the Lord. So a pastor serves the Lord, verse 19. He's humble, he's passionate, he's experienced trials and overcome them. Uh, he's an example. Also in verse number 20, he said, I ministered from house to house. Uh, that was part of his, uh, his action. Uh, he was known to minister from house to house. Now, here's what I believe about a, a pastor teacher. You know, uh, you know, if he is called Ephesians chapter four to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, and Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12, he's designed to be a pastor, a teacher as well. Uh, he not only uses the pulpit as his place of preaching and teaching, uh, but he can use a coffee shop. He can use his own house. He can use the front seat of his car. He can use a picnic bench, a park bench, or, or a rocking chair on somebody's porch. But he's known to be constantly teaching. And I'll tell you something that I encourage a pastor. Uh, find an opportunity every day that you minister to teach somebody something biblically. If it's one-on-one, -on -one, if it's on the phone, if it's texting, if it's emailing, uh, the best way is person to person. And, uh, and Paul constantly was teaching from house to house every day, teaching things about the family, and maybe teaching some finances, teaching uh, discipleship, uh, teaching by way of a gospel presentation. That was obvious in this passage too. Uh, uh, the disciplines of life and uh, and constantly teaching. I encourage pastors, man, when you go to eat every day, you're going to go take a lunch break from the office, grab one of the men from your church, have them meet you down there at the dining hall somewhere in a restaurant and, and spend some time influencing and talking and giving some lessons that teach that particular man or that brother in the Lord. Uh, but he's a teacher. And Paul said it was a constant thing for me. Verse 21, he's giving the gospel. He's a soul winner. And verse number 22, he's a man who's in the spirit. My, you better get a preacher who's got the spirit on him and in him, all around him, a spiritual man that's filled with the spirit. You, you, you ask me, uh, Brother Tom, how do you know that a pastor is filled with the spirit? Come on now. <laughs> You'll know it. Oh, yeah, especially if you have the mind of the Lord. Uh, there'll be a compatibility about the spirit that's in him as well, you see. Uh, but you long to have a pastor who's in the spirit. And uh, what a joy. Uh, verse 23, the scripture tells us that, that he doesn't think of himself uh, and counts his life as dear. He just has a, a different attitude about himself as he walks in humility back in verse number 19. Verse 23, he's ministering the gospel. Verse 25, he's preaching. He's a preacher. Verse 26, he's guiltless, the Bible says. He said, I'm pure from the blood of all men. And verse 27, he said, I've not shunned to declare it unto you the whole counsel of God and to deliver to you everything about the Bible. He doesn't skip passages of scripture, uh, but he takes the Bible for what it says, and he declares all the scriptures of God. That's, that's the role of a pastor. Look down at verse 28 in closing this morning, but I encourage pastors. The scripture says that they ought to take heed to themselves. That's what Paul is telling these Ephesian pastors. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. 
pastors ought to take care of themselves physically. They ought to be in good shape. They ought to be able to, to move fast and, and, uh, and, and not be hindered if all possible by their health conditions. They ought to build their immunity system uh, so that they can resist illnesses and sicknesses. That's right. They ought to build their muscles. They ought to strengthen their heart and do aerobic exercises if they need to and, and eat well and take supplements and sleep well and uh, and be a man of peace and uh, take care of yourself physically. What a shame it is for a preacher who doesn't take care of himself physically. Can I get an amen right there? And something else. Uh, he takes heed to himself spiritually. And that's important. He feeds his soul and he exercises his spirit and he's got the mind of the Lord constantly being renewed daily, his memory in his mind. Uh, a spiritual man who's who's taking care. Take heed to thyself, Paul says to these preachers, uh, maybe physically or, or spiritually. Uh, take heed to yourself financially. And Paul references that in scripture. He said, uh, I, I, I took care of myself and and uh, I was able to provide for myself. And uh, I, I, you see, these hands have ministered unto my necessities down in verse number 34. He was responsible for himself. Not a thing wrong for a preacher to, to have some sort of income on the side of his pastoral ministries. It's a safeguard for his finances because there's a lot of times a pastor can minister. And it's, it, it's not the same opportunity as a, as a man would have in a secular work where he can pick and choose his salary and where he wants to work and so forth. But a passion ministry, uh, sometimes is the ends don't make it financially. And so uh, do what Paul said here to these pastors. Uh, Paul said that my hands have taken care of my necessity. So maybe he's got a sideline of something that's, that's able to, but, but he ought to take care of himself financially. And then he ought to take care of his family. So Paul says, verse 28, to pastors, Take heed, take care of yourself. And then he says, take care of the flock of God. Take heed to yourselves and take heed and take care of the flock of God that's been given to you because you're the overseer in verse number 28. It's the flock of God over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God. And then again, in verse 31, he reminds us of the passionate tears that he had. and and. Uh, and uh, to take care of himself. Verse 35, he's noted as a giver. Uh, he said, it's more blessed to give to these preachers. Pastors, it's more blessed to give than to receive. And uh, what a joy. And then he prayed with preachers. And uh, he mentions that in verse number 37. I remember a prayer that a pastor prayed with me a little over a year ago. I called him just to say hello to him. He and his wife were driving in a car over in Tennessee, just going to uh, somewhere on a trip. And uh, he said, uh, he, he said, Tom, uh, can my wife and I pray for you? And they were driving and I uh, heard him on that speakerphone pray an awesome prayer for me. And it moved me. It blessed me. A pastor who prays with others and prays with, with other preachers. So review, if you want to, in Acts chapter uh, 20, beginning in verse number 18, the lessons that Paul gave to pastors uh, about their role in ministry and instructing them and helping them. And uh, what a joy, especially in the first part of that chapter, where it brought to our attention that this is a person who serves the Lord, verse number 19. He's a humble pastor. He's passionate. He's overcome his trials. He's an example. And uh, he ministers daily, house to house, and teaching people. And uh, he's instructing. He's winning people to Christ, verse 21. Verse 22, he's walking in the Spirit. He thinks less of himself in verse 23. He's, he's exemplifying the ministry of the gospel. He's preaching, verse 25. The whole counsel of God in verse number 27. He takes good care of himself. And he takes good care of the sheep and the flock. Oh, my, what a pastor. And so I would say, if you're looking for an ideal pastor, you'll find him in the word of God in Acts chapter 20, verses 18 to 38. Now, mark that in your Bible, those of you here at Crossroad. 
And why don't you begin to pray? Dear Lord, we're looking for a preacher here at this church. And uh, we're praying that you'll send us the man of God. And, and Lord, I'm willing to set aside all my aspirations and desires and opinions in my mind, what I'd like to see in a pastor. But rather, I want to agree with you for what you see in a pastor in Acts chapter 20, verses 18 to 20, 38. And ask the Lord to fulfill the desires of your heart by delighting in his word and agreeing with God about the qualities that are found in a pastor. Heavenly Father, uh, this morning, as we pray together, we want to agree with the word of God because the word of God is the will of God. And the pastor that Crossroad Baptist Church needs is the pastor found in Acts chapter 20, verses 18 to 38. And God, I pray that the people of God would ask you for this kind of a pastor that would do these things and be these things and live these things in his life, that God would be glorified, the church would be strengthened, that the flock of God would be fed and be thoroughly equipped to do the work of the ministry, and that the man of God would be anointed of the Spirit, walking in humility, doing the work of the Lord. And that's our prayer for Crossroad Baptist Church. And those people today are agreeing with me because we agree with the good word of God today in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings to you. Keep praying. Stay in the will of the Lord. Looking forward to seeing you this Sunday in the Lord's day. Amen.